Okay, I'm going to talk a bit more about my last video, which has to do with getting annoyed when um, personal people, in other words, ego people, um, start prying into your affairs, asking you personal questions. So, uh, as a prelude to this video, you might want to watch that video so you'll get a fuller idea of what uh, this is all about. But this is not exactly a part two, but it is a related video. Okay. Now, this particular uh, video is a commentary on that last video. So in the last video, I started out wearing red or rose colored glasses. So this is an old saying. Some people like to wear or see the world through rose colored glasses. It's not too easy to explain it other than um, everything is rosy and they're not seeing the world that other people see. This is an orange hat. Orange is like a safety color. So, what do we want to know about safety? Stay safe, stay home. If you're watching this sometime in the future, uh, the current time is uh, middle of May 2020 in the middle of the quarantine for COVID-19. It's a big theme for 2020. Okay, this is Vasily Fisk, his hat, and he is a metaphysical detective. And a metaphysical detective. Uh, is looking for information about, well, usually has a case that he's trying to solve, and the case he's been working on has a lot to do with palindromes. A palindrome spelled forward is spelled the same way backwards. So, I'll give you an example here. Okay, uh, Bieber fever. The word fever is almost a palindrome. F-E-V-E-R. If it was F-E-V-E-F, -E -E it would be the same front and back. Level is a palindrome. L-E-V-E-L. L E V E L going the other way, it's the same thing. And it's been a subject for me lately. Vasily's case currently is a uh, suspended, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to get back to it. But um, he does look for odd things like whatever is odd. He looks for them because they're always clues. Okay, so Bieber fever. Everyone's heard of Justin Bieber by now. What's he got to do with 
this commentary on my last video. Um, if you're a celebrity, you have trouble being anonymous. You have trouble being at face in the crowd. You pretty much have to go everywhere with bodyguards. And generally speaking, bodyguards have got to be pretty much able to protect the celebrity from crazed fans or people who might think they might want to do something hurtful to someone who has fame and money. John Lennon The famous Beatle musician was murdered in New York City. Would he have been murdered if he had bigger security people around him? Okay, this gray hat is simply someone who's talking and giving us a bit of explanatory notes. What else am I going to tell you about the last video? Why were we wearing rose-colored glasses? Well, if you're John Lennon, and he was all about bringing more and more love to the world, maybe he was looking through rose-colored glasses and didn't see that there was the potential for someone to want to kill him. And if he wasn't wearing those rose-colored glasses, maybe he might have had a better chance of surviving. Okay, someone wants to know, what about people who are insecure? Who is insecure? Is insecure the same as paranoid? In this case, insecure are people who What does it mean, insecure? People that didn't lock their car doors? People don't close the... I don't know, what do you want to talk about insecure for? Insecure. Or is it about their personality, their insecure? They're always thinking people are judging them and they need to put on a mask. I talked about masks recently. People who aren't being authentic, they're pretending to be something that they're not really. What else? One of the sages, and yesterday I made a number of talks about training the mind, and I said, uh, best information we have is there's only six enlightened sages on planet Earth at any one time. And one of the sages, in one of the books about the sages, uh, said everything is an illusion. To a regular human being, it's just not true. I 
is it? Am I an illusion? Is my phone here, is it an illusion? Nevertheless, one of these sages said, it's an illusion. Something else I read yesterday said, the mind creates everything by using thoughts. Thoughts, I guess they enter the mind and they manifest. And to our awareness, it looks real. But another part of the article said, if you really focus intensely on your own mind, you turn the mind on itself, eventually it will dissolve. And without a mind, do you lose the illusionary world? This article said, yeah, that's what happens. Is that how you become a sage? Um, that's one of the teachings of one of the sages that I read a book about. What's the takeaway from all of this commentary? Uh, it's mostly to do with no... I was going to talk about this guy, Peter Pan. Because Peter Pan lives in Never Never Land. It's kind of a fantasy world. Who else lives in a fantasy world? Well, according to these enlightened sages, we do. All of us unenlightened people. People who are not sages. Because we believe that the world is real and the people in the world are real. And even if the sage says, well, it's your mind and thoughts in the mind that create the world. Um, sorry, honey. In my life, I'm real. And all of you people out there that I see walking around on the street or in Walmart, you're real to me. Nevertheless, people who follow me on this channel will know that I, even yesterday, said, what you are is awareness. That's all. And I keep insisting that your body and your mind are not you. I don't say that they're an illusion. Because your awareness sees them. I mean, is there a difference between an illusion that your awareness sees and something that's real? How would your awareness know the difference? I think you'd have to become an enlightened sage in order to be able to... Maybe they would know. I don't know. I don't know an enlightened sage and I really wish I did. But the reason I keep telling you that you are awareness is because I read it by one of these enlightened, enlightened sage is and then what did I do to confirm it um, I spent an awful lot of time inside myself watching the mind and watching the body with my awareness just watching 
and um, my mind is now saying what my awareness, which I always say is me at the core of me, experiences is that the awareness is not what it is aware of. And yet, enlightened sages, some of them anyway, have said, that the awareness is what it is aware of. So who's right? I don't know. I mean, is this what the enlightened sage is saying? Or is it what a mind is interpreting it to say? Because what exactly is an enlightened sage? Is it a sage whose mind has dissolved? Well, I mean, there's lots of pictures of people who are purported to have been enlightened sages. So, I mean, for a while anyway, their physical body keeps going. I said earlier that the body-mind is one thing. The mind creates the body and... It's interpolated in together. So we have a lot of pickles in our jar. And this is what we're given when we start talking about who am I? And the answers that we get are often Well, in, you know, day-to-day -day operations, when I go to Walmart, you know, when I go and collect a bunch of stuff in my push cart and then I come to the cashier, the cashier looks at me and she says, Hey, you, this is going to be $50 and um, do you want to pay with cash or with a debit card or a credit card? So for everyday life, this body and this mind and this awareness that's usually up here behind your eyes is um, what people considered to be me. So it's only when we're really doing these kind of examinations that we start looking into exactly what are we and then we got to go back in the real world and be like everybody else, act normal. What's the point of doing these kind of examinations as to what we are? you come up with? Best answer I got was curiosity. Okay. Justin Bieber fever. This hat, you know, sometimes what I do on this channel is I just put hats on to see if I get words that come when I wear the hat. This hat is um, done talking This hat I used in the last video because it has the CN Tower and I talked about the tarot card called the Tower and I talked about Saruman, the egoic wizard from the Lord of the Rings movie. And this particular hat just wants to say, um, don't be uh, egoic wizard causing a lot of havoc in the world. The metaphysical detective Vasily Fisk says uh, 
not too much. He's got his cases on suspension, not because of our current quarantine, but because he's gone missing. I mean, when I put on a hat, sometimes I'll put on an accent and the character comes out. And Vasily Fisk is from England and he's got an English accent. And um, when I'm putting this hat on, he's not here. So we just say, you know, he's, he's not here. Why do I say he? Because he's a real character. He's a personality. When, you know, when I put on the hat and I start talking and Vasily's there, the... Um, accent will come out. I'm a character actor, that's the way things work. Okay, they still want to talk about John Lennon. Uh, and they want to talk about Leningrad. So John Lennon was a musician from Liverpool, England, and when he was assassinated, he was living in New York City. What's that got to do with Leningrad? Leningrad is a city in Russia. It was named after Vladimir Lenin. And Lenin, for John Lennon, was spelled L-E-N-N-O-N, -N -N, and Vladimir Lenin was L-E-N-I-N. So the word Lenin sounds the same, but it's got two different spellings, and it was two different people. So even though, you know, most people would say, well, Vladimir Lenin and John Lennon have no relation the metaphysical detective of Vasily Fisk. Vasily is a Russian name. And Fisk pretty much sounds like an English name. So for Vasily Fisk, Vladimir Lenin and John Lenin, an Englishman and a Russian, sound like Vasily Fisk. So it's going to be personal for Vasily the two Lenins. Okay, we told you earlier, palindromes, if this said F-E-V-E-F, -E -E that would be a palindrome. It says fever, so it's not quite. I think I'm done. Looking back on this, yesterday I said, sometimes I come up with really good videos. Sometimes they're funny. And sometimes I have meltdowns. And sometimes I make videos and, you know, it's been 23 minutes and I feel like I run out of gas on this one. So I'm going to call this one kind of like I need to do it over again. You know, like in golf, you make a bad tee off shot and it goes 20 yards instead of, I don't know, 225 yards. Sometimes we call that a worm burner because it goes right along the grass and it just stops. And then you say, well, I got to take a mulligan, which means I'm not going to count that first shot. I'm going to take out a new ball. I'm going to hit a second ball. Or maybe you hit the ball off the tee and it went way banana, a banana hook left, and you're not really sure where it landed. You just figure, I think it really went left. So um, I might not find the ball, so people say, well, I'm gonna hit a second ball, I'm gonna call that a provisional. In other words, if I can't find my first ball, I'm gonna take that second ball. And if the second ball was a really good shot, I'm gonna just take that second shot. I worry about my first shot because it kind of flubbed it up. So uh, this video is considered, um, I'm not going to say it's a total write-off. It's just that 
Even with Vasily Fisk, our metaphysical detective, I still haven't figured out too much about these rose-colored glasses. Now, sometimes John Lennon wore funny glasses. Harry Potter wore not this exact shape, but more round glasses. I've got another set of glasses. And these ones. Are orange. My t-shirt is pink and it says Hollister 1922 22 is an important number for me because um, the metaphysical writer Stuart Wilde who I read quite a bit and went and visited his blog quite often. Um, he talked about the number two as, um, well, 22 for him meant what he called the magical healer, 22. And so um, I always pay attention when I see a 22 because uh, Stuart Wilde, was an incredibly interesting person. And he made a lot of <sighs> prophecies and he talked a lot about his visions and uh, strange things like he talked about uh, being able to walk through walls. He talked about other realms. You know, like the fairy realm, maybe, for example. He talked about things like Merlin and King Arthur and Camelot, the Lady of the Lake. He talked about what he thought was happening on planet Earth. He said that we were headed for what he called the Great Renewal. But before the Great Renewal was coming, he said that the global ego was going to come out. And as I said um, yesterday in some of my videos, ego stands for edging God out. And I also said it's known as the false self. It's not the soul. It is The man-made self is what uh, spiritual teacher Eckhart Tolle calls it. And the global ego is um, all of humanity all together. You put all our egos together and the whole of humanity has an ego. And he said it was going to come out and it was going to be pretty nasty. So, um, you know, the past few years, we've had this thing called QAnon, which somehow was related to Donald Trump and something to do with rounding up um, people who are evildoers. Are the evildoers in the world, the global ego coming out? No. Mr. Wilde passed on, so I can't ask him. But, um, I don't know how to judge it. I can just say, possibly, this big roundup of what QAnon is all about could have to do with the global ego. But the problem is... Uh, Mr. Well talked about the white shadow. The white shadow is individual humans pointing the finger at the other guy, saying, you know, I am pristine, 
I'm Mr. Clean. I never did anything nasty to anybody in my whole life. I am perfect. I am, um, I had a virgin birth. My name is Jesus of Nazareth. So white shadow people have an enormous ego, but their ego, they're hiding from themselves and they're doing a psychological process that's called projection, projection, and they're projecting by pointing at other people and saying, that's the evil doer. In order to get rid of your, what's known as the shadow, shadow comes uh, as a term that comes from Carl Jung, who was a student of Sigmund Freud, one of the fathers of psych modern psychology. And the shadow is traits of yourself that you don't like, that you want to hide away and don't acknowledge. Because they're just things you think other people wouldn't like these traits in me. So I'm going to throw them in a closet inside of me, inside of my mind somewhere. I'm going to lock the door and then I'm going to build a brick wall in front of it. And uh, then I'm going to plant some trees in front of that. So no one knows that I've got this closet full of stuff that I don't, I'm not proud of about myself and I don't love it. So people have got to do the shadow work to um, go through all of this stuff that you're using to hide the shadow, open the closet door and find out the stuff that you have been hiding in your mind's closet. And primarily you have to forgive it and love it in order to, Carl Jung sa said, uh, individuate, which is basically a grow up. So what's happening with the global ego is a lot of people who have still got lots of stuff in their own closet are projecting because the stuff is still in consciousness. They just don't want to say it's, that it's mine. They don't want to own their own shadow. I mean, you walk down the street on a sunny day, everybody's got a shadow. But uh, when it comes to this idea these people say, I don't have a shadow, even though it's high noon and the sun is shining brightly and they're walking down the street. Everyone else looks at them and said, buddy, you got a shadow. It's not very big and it's basically because the sun's right over top of you. But it's coming right down here. But at four o'clock in the afternoon, when the sun's lower in the horizon, you're going to have a long shadow. But you got a shadow, buddy. And then after the global shadow comes out and um, all the people who have been, Stuart Wilde called them fat controllers, people who are abusing other humans because of the nature of their power. Um, the fat controllers are going to be eaten by their own evil. How are they going to be eaten? Well, um, pretty much, Mr. Wilde said, uh, they're probably going to die. Maybe they're going to get cancer. Or maybe they're going to have a bad accident. Or whatever. But they're going to get rubbed out. So Mr. Wilde said, seeing as everyone has got this stuff inside of them, uh, individually, he looked at everyone and he said, you have got to deal with your shadow. You've got to do inner work to see what's in your shadow, in your closet, where you threw everything that you didn't love about yourself. You've got to bring it out, see what's there and love it and forgive it. And he also said, you've got to look at all the other humans that are on this planet you got to realize that you are not perfect and that you did things that were nasty to other people. No one here is Jesus on this planet. And no one can say, I never did anything mean to anybody else. Which means 
you're going to have to be an adult and say, I can forgive myself for things I've done, but I also have to forgive everyone else on the planet for whatever they've done, whatever they've done, even the evil, evil doers. Because if you've got a little bit of evil, then you're not exactly pristine. And who are you to judge other people? And to say, well, they got way more evil than I do. No. It doesn't work that way. To go through redemption for yourself, you got to forgive your faults and everyone else's. Those are the teachings of Mr. Wild, and I'll pass them on to you, given the fact he is not here to talk about it today. And then he said, at some point there is going to be a great renewal on the planet. Where we're going to, I don't know, some people might say, have heaven on earth. When's this going to happen? Well, I walked around today and I saw a lot of people wearing COVID-19 masks when they were standing in line to go into the grocery store, you know, six feet apart in this line. And I looked at them and I said, um, I don't think we're anywhere near to uh, any of these things that Mr. Weld's talking about. Because when I look at these people, these people are not thinking for themselves they are listening to authority figures and the authority figures pretty much have carte blanche which means freedom to um, abuse power over others because you know they're in positions of power positions of authority and they can say things and um, people are given to believe them so the people that are, you know, wearing these masks, um, I think those people are living in fear. And that is how um, abuse of power happens. People are put into low states of consciousness, which is things like fear. And uh, when someone's in fear, they're basically very easily controlled by others. So um, what about COVID-19? Well, that's probably a pretty much all I'm going to talk about in this lecture. Uh, but, you know, for me, COVID-19 is um, a phony baloney hoax perpetrated by people who um, are very good at hoaxing us. You may have a different opinion, and if you're a different person, then maybe you have a different opinion too. But um, my opinion it comes from long years of studying humans, long years of studying lots of different things. And, um, yeah, I'm not very good at convincing people about my views because um, I don't have any authority. But I still got an opinion. And that's my opinion. It's a hoax. And there's an awful lot of people who buy into hoaxes because pretty much every time you turn on the national news, there's another hoax all about lies anyways uh, that's a long enough video for today thank you for watching and um, yeah, it's probably not my best video but 
if you keep watching all my videos, maybe they'll start to make sense because uh, I do tend to refer back to previous videos that I made a long time ago.